now that we have our movement dynamics and our ability to go from room to room, let's go ahead and set up our um, another aspect of the challenge, um, which I'm going to add a timer into this game so that you can't just run around infinitely forever in the maze. Um, you have a time pressure to get to the finish line and figure out how to move on to the next area. So to do that, let's do a little bit of setup first. Um, I haven't reset my free aspect ratio, so let's change this to 16 by 9. And then I'm going to take my scene, pop it on down here so that I can see everything. And I'm going to go to my game overlay here. I'll find it here. Um, 16 by 9. My scene is still, for some reason, showing. Oh, okay, there we go. All right. All right. Um, I haven't renamed these buttons yet. I'm just letting them sit here until necessary, but um, I'm actually going to disable the start button for now. because I don't actually need to hook it up to anything, but it's going to be my um, pause button eventually. So for right now, I'm just going to turn it off and I'm going to leave the quit button here um, on my scene. My title I want right here. And I'm also going to add to my game overlay, I'm going to create a text mesh pro text and I'm going to call this text um, countdown time, timer text probably. Timer text. And in here I'm just going to put like one, two, three. Uh, I assume I'll probably have roughly that many digits. I'm going to find a good location for it. That's pretty good and I'm going to center it. Yours doesn't have to be here. You might want to put it off to the side of your screen. Whatever feels good to you, that's fine. Um, and font-wise, I'm going to use the same font as I have been using, so I'm just going to go ahead and drag that in. If you'd like to use a different font, you can go ahead and generate another font and use that. That's all up to you. Okay, so now we have some kind of pre-setup done on here. Let's just close all these so I don't have a bunch of stuff sitting around. All right, scripts. So our scripts, I want to create a new script, C sharp script. I'm going to call this gameplay control. And I'm going to go ahead and attach it to my game overlay. And the reason I'm attaching it to the game overlay is I know it's going to be in every scene. It's going to go over top of everything. And also the game overlay has the text that I want to access anyway. So that'll work just fine for me. Let's pop her on open. And eventually it's going to tell me I need to update and I'm just going to ignore it. So. Uh, to do this, we need to, um, at, le at the very least, we know um, when the time runs out, we want to go to another scene. So we need to have the namespace for scene management, and we know we're going to need to access the Text Mesh Pro information, so we need to be using the Text Mesh Pro namespace. So up top, let's go ahead and add using Unity Engine dot scene management and using TM Pro, like so. Um, they're gray right now because we don't have anything calling on them. That's fine. Uh, we're going to go ahead and set up some variables that we need to be able to see in the inspector because we're going to test some things as we go along. And we want to be able to make maybe one maze be a shorter time frame than another, um, different levels of difficulty. Uh, and that'll be easier if we can do it from the inspector. So serialized field. field Let's call this, this is going to be a float because it's a timer. And we want it to be, let's call it time start. And let's say a standard time you have 60 seconds, so 60F. Because it's a float, it needs the F at the end. And we're going to need to drag in our text. So we are going to do a serialized field of type text mesh pro UGUI. Remember it is on the, G, on the UI, so we need that particular type and we just get to name it. I'm going to call mine timer text, timer text, ah, text, bop. Um, and these are just going to sit here. I'll work with them as I need to. 
So for creating a timer, I would like to use a coroutine. The reason for that is I can start it in the start and then the coroutine will run and return a new value each second. So it will be constantly counting down and whatever I do otherwise will be separate from it. Um, so it will just constantly make sure that it's running. So in start, um, remember a coroutine is a little bit different. Um, it's a specific type of method. So let's do start coroutine and then parentheses and then we name the coroutine. Uh, I'm going to call this one start timer and then it is a coroutine is a method so it has its own parentheses and then like so. It's going to tell me that it doesn't exist in the current context which is fine. I'm going to make it exist down here. Um, to start a coroutine we need an I enumerator. Remember don't let it don't hit autofill it's very tempting because it'll do I enumerable which is not what you need. It's an I enumerator start timer bup, bup, and we need our curly brackets. So inside here um, just a refresher on coroutines. Coroutines are a type of method that you pass information into and it has to return a different thing. So um, we're going to use a while statement on this uh, because we want it to run while the timer is above a, a certain time. So we, whenever it gets to zero, we want it to move on to the lose screen. But for right now, um, let's just say while, and then in parentheses, because you need to pass in information. So time start, or yeah, time start is the name of our variable. We want it to be greater than, well, when it's greater than zero, it will always be greater than zero. So, um, Let's say greater than negative one. And then the while statement needs its own curly brackets. We're going to say yield return new, which is required for our um, fact that we're using a coroutine. We want to wait for seconds. And we want that number of seconds to be one F one second. For every one second we're going to do this next thing and after one second we're going to say time start which is the variable for how long we have. You can see it highlighted up here at the top. Um, so time start minus minus meaning subtract one off of it and Let's just stick with this for now. We'll worry about putting it in the text for a second. Let's test and make sure that this is working. So I'm going to click on Game Overlay, the object I attached my controller to. Um, I'm going to go ahead and pass in my timer text so that it doesn't throw a uh, exception for not having anything in there. And you can see it is now counting down every second. It is changing this time start number down one second each time. And if I were to read it, let it run all the way down to um, negative one, it would stop at negative one because it can't go any further. It would stop because it is not no longer true because we used a while statement. So while will only run while, while uh, the time is above negative one. And when once that's not true, it stops. After this, we need to take our timer text and update it. Um, this is something we did uh, in a couple of different games previously, so it should look pretty familiar. Uh, but like, let's start in timer text up here in the start. Let's start with the information that it is supposed to have at the beginning. So timer text dot text equals time start dot to string parentheses because that's a method built into Unity and save. This is just saying take the text portion of timer text, set it equal to time start, and then make it a string. And let's see how that works. Okay, it's switched to 60. Now, it doesn't mean that it's not counting down any longer, because it is. It's just because we have it in start, it only updates one time. So let's go here. Um, we've got it set up so that it pops on the right time just at the beginning of start, but we can make it pass in new information now that we have our coroutine running. So let's go down to timer text dot text equal to 
time start dot to string. It's exactly the same information up here. It's just basically saying, let's update that information. And now it counts down. Beautiful. We have a working timer in our game. However, now that we have our working timer, uh, it will get to negative one and then the timer will stop and nothing will happen. Um, because we need it to move to a new scene, we need another piece of code that tells it to move to the next scene. And if you know what to do, or if you suspect what to do, I encourage you to just pause and go ahead and give it a go. Um, the hint being that you will check for what the time start variable is and if it is a certain value then use your scene manager to load a certain scene. Um, I'm just letting this run while I talk so we can witness and make sure that everything is working. Um, so it's a good time to just pause the video and uh, give it a go and see if you can figure out how to make it so that the time uh, reaching zero triggers it to go to another scene. So two, one, zero, and then it gets to negative one, and then nothing happens, which is fine. Um, that's what we expected it to do. And if you took on that challenge, I am very proud of you. Uh, but if you didn't, or if you needed a little bit of help, or if you just wanted to follow along but you did know what you were doing, then uh, here's how we're going to go about it. In the update method, we need to check at every frame if the time is a certain time. So if time start. And we want to know if time start is less than zero. The reason I can't say equal to zero, so say equal equal to zero. And then we go scene manager dot load scene. And we want to load in parentheses, we want to load specifically the lose screen. So I'm going to call it exactly by name. Um, so if you hover over this, it says floating point number comparing, compare difference with an epsilon. And so it's saying this basically is too abstract and that we can't necessarily do that math. Um, time start is a variable of type float um, and it wants to change the type of it. So let's try the fix and see if see if this does anything. And then this would be zero. Um, so I'm going to hit play and then I'm going to actually, you know, I can make this a lot faster. For testing purposes, I'm going to make the time start zero or ten right now. the beauty of the serialized field, of course. We can adjust it from this end over here. Nope. Doesn't, doesn't do anything properly. So let's go back to the way I know is going to work. Um, instead of this crazy set of numbers, I'm just going to say um, time start is less than zero and save it. Save it again because I'm not sure I hit that button. Okay, and let's crank this way down to like five so we don't have to sit here watching it forever. And you'll want to adjust this back up obviously. Three, two, one, and zero, and loading the loose screen, which needs to be adjusted now that I've set my scene to a 16 by 9 ratio, but that's a problem for another time. I will fix and adjust that in a bit. So now we have a challenge element. So go through all of your scenes and I would test to see how long it takes you to reach the end of the goal and then math out how long you think would be an appropriate amount of time to feel challenged, but not so challenged that you don't wish to continue. And then once you finish going through and doing that, meet me back here.